Hi, I'm Ulf Petersen from Roskilde University. And uh, recently I've been looking into the uh, O1 model uh, from OpenAI and trying to use it in different ways in the teaching, but also in the research. And I will focus on research in this paper. Um, and the O1 model is a little is special because it can do some reasoning. So it's re uh, reflecting before it's coming with the answer. And especially it's good at solving uh, mathematical uh, problems. And so I want to show you how I've been using this model in in a paper that I'm writing right now. So this is not something that the model have been trained on. So this is some new problems. So let me put it a little into context. So here is a paper that came out last year where I'm together with Jeppe. We are studying a model for for nearly hard spheres and uh, and how they behave, uh, how they uh, crystallize and, and things like that. And this paper gave me an idea for the next paper because the theory we de developed here was in three dimension and for one particular potential between particles. And I thought, okay, this can be generalized to any dimensions, one, two, three, eight, 15, and to a, a more uh, a, a wider class of potentials. And so then I started to writing on um, this manuscript and this have I've been working on this on and off for a little more than a year now. And so in this paper we are uh, I am um, looking at um, yeah, this more general theory and you can see there's a, some a lot of math here. And yeah so let's see here. So if you look at this one here, here I'm defining an integral that I'm then uh, putting all the details in the appendix. And I remember back in a year ago, uh, when I had to solve this integral, it turns out uh, that it's, uh, it's, a little, it's a little tricky to solve, uh, and it's also a little tedious, so I really had to write it down on paper many times and make sure that I didn't make mistakes. Spent quite a long time on that. Uh, and also just to make sure that I did it right. Let me scroll down here. So here is now the appendix, and so here you can see I put down some of the intermediate calculations that I then double checked to see if I did it right. Uh, as a test, I also wanted to um, to put it into some of these uh, CAD tools that can solve these mathematical things, and I just I simply I worked for a full day I think, and I couldn't get these tools to solve this. So maybe that's because I'm not good enough of using them. Um, and then uh, recently this uh, O1 model came up and uh, came uh, became available for us. And then I tried, okay, I'm going to try this uh, math problem uh, and I know the solution, so I know what it should get. But just as a double check, I wanted to see what it gets. Okay, so here I am in uh, ChatGPT and the O1 model and I'm going to copy in a prompt here I prepared. And so it's saying here, uh, let int d... Uh, yeah, it says here that in D is an integral and is overall uh, spatial dimensions D. So this could be uh, one, two, three, or eight dimensions. And then here I put in the integral uh, in the, this uh, LaTeX form. And there's in the integrand there are some uh, variables like this uh, W and V and E, mm -hmm. and there are some integers and uh, like I and J. Uh, and so I'm defining what they are here just in everyday language. Um, <clears throat> telling it here that this is the pair potential and the pair virial is the derivative of the pair potential and the pair Boltzmann's factor is defined like this. So you have to plug in this thing and that's why this uh, integral becomes a little bit complicated because when you put in these variables, it's yeah, it becomes a little tedious uh, and you have to really uh, pay attention. So let's uh, start the prompt and see if it can solve it. So here is now this, let's see, yeah, so now it's starting to thinking and uh, analyzing the integral, breaking down the integration, uh, yes, and um, simplifying the solution. And here we get a little insight into uh, what it's thinking. So let's see, analyzing the integral. Uh, and you can see here it's focusing on low temperature. So it's kind of trying to break down and see how it can solve it. Um, and this is just a summary of what it's thinking. And see here, understanding the volume elements. So that's an important part because we're doing this integral in D dimensional. So we have to go into some spherical coordinates. So it's realized that. 
and then it's doing some uh, substitution and simplifications. That's where I was worried that I made mistakes. So let's see if this one is better. Um, and reworking integral and doing things. And let's, let's see if it's finished. Oh, it's still thinking. Okay. Okay, 62 seconds. So a little more than a minute, it found a solution. So let's see if it's better than the one that I, or the same as the one that I spent uh, quite some time on, on finding. So let's close this down. And so it wants to uh, find this integral. And it's here, it's just repeating some of the information that I gave. Um, yeah, so it has all these elements. I should also mention that I've to try to put this in a few times and it for instance one time I just wrote that W was the pair variable I did not give the definition and then it messed up and and uh, just assumed that there was something else and I've also tried that it didn't realize that you had to do this in D dimensions and it just did it always in one dimension um, so I had to tweak the prompt a little bit uh, and and really careful reading what it was doing um, but now I'm just going to scroll down and see if it gets the solution. Then it has this integral. And here's where you have to use, for instance, uh, a limit. So you have like a, a temperature going to zero and then the limit goes from one to infinity. And uh, then you can solve the integral because it because something with um, gamma function. So let's see if it realizes that. Yes. And here you have this something here with a gamma function. Um, and... It's writing down the answer in the end. And let's see, uh, I think this is right. It could simplify this a little bit, uh, or I simplified it differently, but it looks okay. So it, it seems like it got the right solution here. Um, so I think this is quite amazing. And what's really nice about this is that you can put it in this uh, everyday language uh, and it's uh, figuring it out. But you really have to read this and make sure that it's doing the right things. I've tried a few times that it's, going off in a wrong direction. So I think this is uh, really um, amazing how it could be used. And this was much easier to use than these uh, CAD tools. Um, and so because I've calculated this by hand, I know that it did this right. But I think it also made it more pedagogical than uh, what I did in my appendix. In my appendix, I just gave all the, the steps. Um, but here it gave a more uh, pedagogical explanation of what, what was going on. Um, so maybe I have to go and rewrite my uh, my appendix to make it a little more pedagogical. Okay, I hope that uh, that you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.